So welcome back to the LNX files. As always, this is a safe space for all things spooky. And today we're gonna use these tarot cards to do a what the heck check on Ryan Seacrest, Aubrey Page. I came up with this idea on my own. Let's get going. Ryan Seacrest has been trending kind of because it has been released to the world that He's date has a girlfriend. Well, he's been dating her for a while or whatever. Her name is Aubrey Page. She's 26. She's a model. She's a Scorpio. And apparently when they go out or when they travel, he makes her go Dutch with him. And I was like, that's ridiculous. Like his net worth is like 450 million. She's a model. And so she's a 26 year old model. What that means is like she's aging out of modeling essentially. Now I haven't Googled her hardcore. Maybe she's a very like, you know, profitable model. Maybe she's doing really well in modeling. But I mean, I, I didn't look at her and be like, oh, you're that face I've seen everywhere. Like, like she's the face of like brand campaigns. Like who knows, maybe she's rolling it. I don't know, but it still doesn't matter. Like his net worth is significantly higher than hers. She's just starting out in her career. Like going Dutch when you're a multi multi millionaire. I was just like, oh my goodness. And it of course made me wonder about his sexuality, right? Because, you know, throughout the last decade, people have wondered about like Ryan Seacrest. People um, have wondered if he might, you know, have more of a complicated sexuality, like say a, a Leonardo DiCaprio, you know, someone who's whispered about. With Leonardo DiCaprio, one thing that I heard about him was that the models that he just casually dates, not the ones that he has like a, a long-term re relationship with, that those girls pay him to be seen with him. Because just being seen with Leonardo DiCaprio can elevate their careers exponentially. So maybe Ryan Seacrest thinks he's actually being generous here. Like maybe he thinks like, well, you know, I don't know how interested I am in a long-term relationship with anyone, regardless of gender. And, you know, you should be paying me to be out with me and to be shaking hands with my friends and all that. But I'm not gonna ask you to pay me the way other people might. I'm just gonna ask you to go Dutch and not cause me any expenses. Like, that just doesn't sound like a girlfriend. Like, that sounds like an agreement, right? It sounds like an understanding, right? An arrangement is the word that I'm looking for. Yes. So yeah, can you imagine like he's flying first class and she's in coach or like, is she really going to be like, yeah, I'll meet you there in two hours. My Southwest flight doesn't leave till 730. And he's like, oh, okay, well, you know, let me know when your Uber arrives at my penthouse. Like really like that kind of a stuff. It like, it's, it's just mind boggling, which really to me calls into his sexuality again. Now he uh, was accused by a former stylist wardrobe person, uh, Susie Hardy, back in 2018, that he sexually harassed her repeatedly for years. And when that story came out, I didn't want to believe it. I just didn't want to believe it. And my friends were like, why do you care? It's just another, you know, Ryan Seacrest is another one of the bad guys of Me Too. And I was just like, but Ryan Seacrest, we've lived with him in our cars, you know? Like, I, I don't know how radio works, but like, can you get Ryan Seacrest in the morning if you live in Minnesota? I don't know. But like, that man has been in my car for like for morning after morning. I was like, I felt like I knew the guy. I felt like he was a friend. I, so I really didn't want to believe those allegations when they came out in 2018, but you know what? I think they're true. One of my friends who identifies as gay, bisexual, said that some of the accusations that Susie Hardy made about him would be very typical for a man who might have repressed homosexuality. So that is what my friend said. You know, we're not presenting this as fact or fiction. It's just speculation. It's just one person's feedback. If you're curious about some of the things that Susie Hardy said, you know, just go to this link below. She details the abuse. So back to me. I was so torn up about this. I was like, no, not Ryan. We can't li we can't lose Ryan to the Me Too movement. Um, there was a clip of him acting inappropriate um, during the shooting of, I guess, American Idol or whatever that show is. And there was a hot mic and he was hitting on Katy Perry and it was totally inappropriate. And the reason he wasn't abusive to her, although I would view this as abuse because this is a workplace and it's completely inappropriate, although he wasn't as abusive to her as he was to his wardrobe stylist, 
that's just because Katy Perry is a person of power. You know, she's a pop star. She has money and she has options and she has power and leverage. So when I saw this clip and I'm putting it in the description, watch it. It's like two minutes long or less. Then I knew I was like that makeup artist was absolutely telling the truth. And then I felt a sense of shame because I didn't believe the makeup artist right away. So let's see what the heck is going on with Ryan Seacrest. And also let's take a look at Ryan's immediate astrological chart. So we don't know his rising sign. How can that be? But zero surprises to anyone, he is a Capricorn. I mean, what do Capricorns like to do? They like to dig ditches for fun. And when they're done digging a deep ditch, they say, okay, I'm ready to dig another ditch. And so what I'm really saying is that they like to work. They're, they like to work. They are often very strongly identified by their work. And they like to work hard and frequently for long hours. You know, they are the sea goat. And they're just like, I'm going to climb this mountain. I'm a goat. I'm a goat. I may not be a lion like Leo's. I may not be a bull like the Taurus folk. I may not be a ram like the Aries folk. But I'm a little goat. I can get a lot done. So one could argue that Capricorns might feel like they have something to prove. His moon is in Taurus, so the moon is exalted in Taurus, so you would think that he has a very great, very strong emotional processor, but that may just be, he may just use it for work, you know, and for sussing out projects. That may just be one way. The moon is also in direct opposition of Uranus, which is, Uranus isn't exactly a malefic. It can go kind of either way. You know, it can be very positive, like good surprise, or it can be very negative, like nasty surprise. And so when Uranus is opposing a, a core celestial body like the moon, which is your emotional processor, that's going to be someone who's going to, we're going to see the more wild and woolly side of Uranus. So we're going to be someone who's like maybe a bit erratic, maybe doesn't have strong command of their emotions and might have very big emotions for some things and very like downplayed emotions for other things. So we're not talking about someone who has like mastery of their emotions. So I think erratic would be the best word to describe someone with this exact placement. So that's number one. Uh, so zero surprises to anyone. Uh, Ryan has a stellium of planets in Capricorn. So he's got Venus there. He's got Mercury and his sun. So he's got these little jet engines in Capricorn that make him a very good worker bee. Here's also what's interesting. He has Neptune conjunct Mars and Sagittarius. So I thought that that was interesting just because I expected to see Mars and Saturn having a nice harmonious aspect in his chart. Like Mars accomplishing goals, Saturn hard work and d discipline and determination, but they're not actually uh, interacting in his chart, which surprised me. But Neptune conjunct Mars might suggest someone who maybe gets a little hazy about, you know, goal accomplishment or direction. Like we've seen this man do a lot of stuff and now he's gonna be the host of Wheel of Fortune. I mean, it's kind of a weird career move, like it's vintage, do people still watch the show? Does anyone care? Why are we doing this? Are you trying to resuscitate it? Is this just a big payday? Like, who knows? Maybe all of those things. And that, to me, looks very Neptune conjunct Mars. Like, goal accomplishment, but what are we doing here? It's all hazy and what the heck. Okay, so that's number one. He has an exalted Jupiter in Pisces. So Jupiter's a greater benefic. His Jupiter is like ready to play ball. It's like, let's do this. Let's go. Let's move, move, move. So, so he's got good luck on his side. We don't know what houses these are in. We don't know his rising sign. How do we not know this? And then here's what's interesting in regards to his views of women. We have Pluto squaring Venus. That could be an abuser. So if people are abusers or if they've been subjected to certain types of abuse, usually of a sexual nature, you want to see what Pluto is doing in the chart. If you're looking for any tells, if you suspect something that someone's, you know, suffered through, where is Pluto in the chart? So this is someone, Venus represents not only relationships, but just women, your relationship with women. Pluto is the dark Lord. Okay. Sure. Possible re rebirth and regeneration, but also the dark Lord squaring Venus, making a very unharmonious aspect with Venus. So maybe someone with mommy issues as well. well. Let's just take a look at what's going on with Aubrey and Ryan and try to suss out if this is a real relationship. I'm not going to cut the cards again. Aubrey, Ryan, Aubrey, Ryan, Helping or hurting the situation, and where is the energy heading? Okay, so Aubrey's external vibe towards Orion. Oh, okay, so justice in reverse. 
So she thinks something's unfair. Like she thinks something's out of whack. She thinks the playing field is not level. So yeah, I would feel that way too if I'm going Dutch with my multimillionaire boyfriend. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So Ryan's external vibe towards Aubrey. Hmm. Wow. Okay. So four of wands in reverse. So he's just like, look, you're just here for right now is essentially what he's telling her. So upright, this is a card of things coming together, structure, like things are getting real. This is when people move in together. This is when we're building a real long-term relationship. In reverse, this is like, it's a hard pass on that. Or it's like not right now, very slowly, delays, static, upheaval. When I turned this card over, I got this more as like a hard pass, like you're not the one. But it could be static or delays around this. It could. That, that's, that is a way to interpret it. Okay. Um, Aubrey's internal vibe towards Ryan. Hmm. Oh, interesting. So another major arcana card, we got the death card in reverse. So she thinks things need to change, but they're changing slowly. Maybe she feels like she's making progress with the guy. So upright or in reverse, the death card always means change. I would say so occasionally, I guess I do see it meaning like no change, but like usually it's just like incremental progress. Like the death card's coming for you, upright or in reverse. You know, you can't escape it. It's the Grim Reaper and it's a card of transformation. So when it shows up in reverse, usually it's like molasses. It's, it's just a very slow, sometimes very pay, painful change. So does she feel like she's making headway with him? Maybe. Ryan's internal vibe towards Aubrey. Hmm. These are not buying signs. So I'm doubting that he's serious about her, just like nine of wands in reverse. So I'll write this as a card of like, wait and see, like planted your flags, you planted the crops. Now we got to see what happens in the spring or whenever harvest is, whenever harvest is. Okay. So when this card shows up in reverse, usually there's nothing to wait and see. Usually it means the answers are in front of you. It's like, you've waited, you've seen, now you know. So it may just be very cut and dry for Ryan, and he kind of seems like that type of guy. And also Capricorns can be cheap. And you know who told me that? A Capricorn. She's like, Capricorns can be cheap. I'm not cheap, but a lot of Capricorns are. It, it can be something about the Saturnian sign, you know, Saturn ruled sign. So that's neither here nor there. If you're a Capricorn, put in the comments if you're cheap or not. Okay. What is helping or hurting the situation? Okay. We've talked about this card before. Damn, all reversal. So we got the fool in reverse. So this is about like not going forward, cold feet, lack of confidence. Upright, this is optimism. Let's take a step into the red mist. Let's go. Let's move forward. We got this. So when this card shows up in reverse, it's like, uh, don't feel comfortable about moving forward. This is looking like an arrangement to me. Like, it looks like he views this as an arrangement or a very structured relationship. Like, my side, your side. She might have, like, a little more hope for it becoming something real just by the fact that she got major arcana cards and that she appears to be hoping for change. Okay. And where is the energy heading? I mean, we got the Page of Wands. So there's a variety of ways to interpret things. One thing I would like to note, no cups cards anywhere. Like this looks very arrangement-y. So Page of Wands could be a new chapter in their relationship, like new path or side path that they go on. Or it could just mean someone new. I mean, a Page of Wands could just be like, and then the new chick comes along and then he goes and runs off with her. So, or the cards could just be rem reminding us that this relationship is so new, it's still just getting its sea legs that like we gotta give it time. But this is a card of just like youth. They, they may be highlighting like her immaturity and also his emotional immaturity. Like with the Page of Wands, like these are two people embarking on something new. Also, they're emotionally immature. They may be highlighting that as well. So with something like this, like it's not warm and fuzzy. It's not ooey gooey. There's no emotional connection. That's what I got for you guys. So comment below. Let me know your thoughts. No cups anywhere. Not surprising. So uh, as always, like and subscribe. And as always, we'll do this again.